Um, I am coding a CQRS sort of event stored website and um, I thought I'd demo for a friend uh, how easy it is to add a new feature. Um, quick overall, I got, for example, I've got these properties here and I want to store property events in this table. There's just some dummy data here I copied from the template. Um, now this uh, property is made up of events. At the moment it is only made of the um, list new property event but when you accept applicants uh, to the property to go through the process of getting contracts and stuff that is also an event. So that will give us the two events. Now at this moment of time there is a very simple uh, database here for properties. Um, and if we just scroll sideways, you can see it just lists uh, the ID, the addresses, and some extra information. Uh, and if it's accepting applicants. Now, it doesn't really matter what the structure of this table is, um, because we're going... We're not limited with CQRS. We can change this on the query side. However, um, I now want to handle these events and to create a new sort of um, a new read model basically from these events so I'm going to go into my um, properties sort of aggregate and in here I've got the read model and I've got some subscribers I've got my SQL property subscriber which I'm not happy with the name of because it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not valid now when I add this second class which is going to be called sort of property events uh, should call it a subscriber. I'm not sure whether it should be a subscriber or handler. I'm not sold on either one at the moment. Anyway, so we're going to have this event. Uh, it's going to take. Um, just be lazy for now and copy the. Uh, we'll just copy this from the other one. Uh, yeah, it should come and clean up anyway. Uh, public function. Uh, when a property was listed, uh, and this will take the um, event which is, happens to be the same as new property listed. Again, not convinced on the names, but um, property event subscriber. Not convinced on that name either. It should be like property history a subscriber, maybe. Anyway, so. Uh, new property was listed. Uh, generate the documentation for that and import the class. Uh, so now we need to make a table and this is going to be quite simple. Um, so it's just raw queries at this point. Uh, query uh, property, should we call it property history? And in that case let's change this to rename to property history as well um, as that seems a little better suited for the job anyway uh, and it'll be basic insert um, I suppose the ID can just be auto generated um, or we can just do ID. It's, it's good to have a. Uh, I, I always think it's useful to have a um, uh, ah, crap. That's why. Sorry, I have um, in other applications. It's just called UUID. Uh, when I came to do this application, I. Um, Change. Normally, I use stuff like property ID or user ID or contract ID, but as it's not really relevant, I just need to randomly generate one. That will do. Um, so possibly the event uh, event name should be uh, property new listed. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't spell. Created at, and I hope 
I've got an event here for. I might not have it, and that might be a real bummer. Listed at, that's why. Listed at. Um, that object is a date-time object, which actually will has a to string method on, so it's fine. Um, and I think that about covers it up. Uh, we have another event which we will do just for the sake of it when property accepted applications. Uh, this is when a, a tenant can um, submit an application to uh, get a contract from the landlord. Um, and I can't remember the name of this event either. I don't code in this code base enough. Um, property access applications. There you go. And this is basically going to be a copy and paste of this crap. And just and the go is going to be different as well. Uh, come on, intelligence. Uh, there we go. Copy um, here. Um. As you can tell, I cannot spell. Hence why my code base is full of errors. Um, anyway. And we'll just refract that. That's why PHP Storm is a godsend for dyslexic people. And this is where we have to add the Laravel magic, which I love this annotation. It's the only annotation I like in the code base. Um, but. Um, right, it's good. I like it. It's quite useful for me. I'm not too convinced on this changing from slashes to dots. In this case, it sort of gets a little annoying. Uh, in this case, it's exactly the same except the event or oh, the same namespace, but it's now a new property listed. Now, we've now created these two handlers. We're going to run into a bit of a problem. If I now go into uh, terminal, do I have terminal in? No. Let me just swap that in. Um, into this screen. This is my smallest screen for a better image. Um, I have a command here. It, it's, it's quite bad. Basically what we're doing is a migrate refresh which is going to completely destroy the database and then make it new. That doesn't matter. We're using CQRS. We can rebuild from the events. So that is a totally safe operation to do in production, development, whatever. Uh, then I'm going to replay the user events, the uh, company events and the property events. Uh, I will eventually code this into one command that reruns all the events from the event store, um, but I can get around to it. Yeah. And it's just reminded me that that's not going to work, because we did use Laravel for this, but we didn't add it to the um, events provider. I recommend you use the, um, the annotation provider for uh, Laravel. Oh, this is so useful. Uh, and when did this magic come into PHP? I, I love it. I absolutely love the colon colon class. Anyway, um, you're going to get sick of me doing this soon. Uh, so, what we will do is we will just run that command. We might possibly get an error. Uh, that's because I haven't imported the class. Oh, laziness, you. Yeah. You are uh, screwing me over. Import class. No, no, import this one. Probably explains why the telesense didn't work. Um, this is lazy. This is a bit of a hack. So the database manager returns an instance uh, of the manager. And then there's a, a, a magic method for call, which uses the current connection, which is actually an interface of the connection. Uh, so to get the IntelliSense to pop up, which I know some people slate me for. Uh, I just hacked that in. Uh, Scrutinizer doesn't like it, but um, whatever. Anyway, when I run this, I expect to get a, a database error. Nope, I cannot have that UUID. Crap. Um, for the sake of uh, getting this demo done, I will just swap to the property ID and use random. Uh, that needs to be fixed, but in it is literally just to get this to work. Um, 
We're going to get a database error. There you go. Cannot have probably history. That is fine. Uh, we'll just copy that. Yes. Why not? And then we'll do PHP as uh, make migration uh, create a property. I didn't paste. Damn it. Property history table. So we'll create a migration for that. Um, so if we go into the database, feel free to comment as well on this. Um, any of the code, I'm, I'm well open for suggestions on how to improve. Um, we don't need both, though. we just need the timestamp for created at um, people shouting at their screens, event name, that's the only one, other one we had, table dash string event name, and just to make sure, see this is a problem being dyslexic, I have to uh, use copy and paste a ridiculous amounts just to make sure I don't make silly little errors. Now, if I now go into my uh, terminal, <laughs> I should remember it's to the right, and rerun, Hopefully we will get no errors. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, now if we open SQL Pro and refresh, we'll have another table called Property History. And we can see in here we've got new property created for each of these properties. And damn, I forgot to list the property ID. What an absolute noob. So, I will fix this. I was going to say that was about to conclude, but it doesn't. So we will just copy this in, property... I suppose this is the advantage of CQRS um, and why people like Jeffrey Ways probably plan what they're talking about instead of me who just opened QuickTime. But as I was saying, um, you can literally just pile straight in. <sighs> what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that it doesn't really matter. The query side can always be rebuilt um, from uh, the event store they both happen to have the same property ID anyway, uh, they can always be built from the event store so if you do happen to make a mistake uh, especially while in development um, you don't have to worry about data loss uh, it's a little annoying when you're developing in a local environment and you make some sort of breaking change to the schema or the structure of your sort of domain and you have to lose the data. Uh, I know you can use seeds and stuff to fill it up, but this way I've still got those events. Now I might need to go and remove them or edit some of the events, um, but I still have the flexibility to sort of do this dump and rebuild the whole database from the event store. So if I now go to SQL Pro and refresh this table, we can now see we've got the property IDs. Just like that, um, you, you saw the refresh there. Um, now this is so powerful. This means, for example, you can go through and the contracts can be quite complicated and have quite a lot of events, but I can very easily construct a company uh, a contract history table. Now I've also noticed that the naming convention has now changed and I should have probably used property histories which doesn't really make sense, but it doesn't matter. This read model can change and be destroyed and recreated from all of the events I have in my event store. Um, I'm using Greg Young's getEventStore.com application for that. But yeah, I think this is enough to conclude my little demo.